everybody, welcome to Cop Tool. You know, dust collection, it's becoming a bigger and bigger deal all the time with the silica dust regulations coming into effect. I got a Metabo vacuum that sucks. I got a Unitec vacuum that sucks. I got a Bosch that sucks. A Milwaukee that sucks. A Makita that sucks. And a Pulse Pack that sucks. And we want to let you know which vacuum sucks the best. It's our vacuum shootout. Let's go. Everybody needs a good vacuum and wants one that gets the job done for a good price. But the OSHA regulations for silica dust collection have ramped up the discussion significantly. All the vacuums we're comparing in this video meet the OSHA silica dust compliance regulations when operated by the manufacturer's specifications. And they all have their proprietary self-cleaning systems to ensure consistent performance with reduced filter clogging and consistent airflow. And you can read all about that on the blog at coptool.com since we're not going to dive into too much detail on that in this video. All right, our contestants are the Metabo ASR35 ACP All-Purpose Self-Cleaning Vacuum. That's a 9-gallon vac with 130 CFM. The CS Unitec 9-gallon Wet-Dry HEPA Dust Extraction Vacuum and that's model number CS1445, and that has a 130 CFM. The Bosch Dust Extraction 9-Gallon Vacuum Automatic Cleaner, VAC090A, that's a 150 CFM vac. The Milwaukee 8-Gallon Dust Extractor, model 8960-20, that's a 148 CFM. The Makita Dust Extraction 12-Gallon Wet-Dry Auto-Cleaning Extract Vac, VC4710, and that's a 134 CFM vacuum. And finally, the Pulseback 550 HEPA Vacuum Auto-Filter Cleaning 8-Gallon 150 CFM Basic. That model number is 103550. We asked Hilti and DeWalt to add their machines to the shootout, but they declined, and that sucked in the non-vacuum sense of the word. So we put together some of our own, mostly scientific, tests to demonstrate and measure which of the six vacuums really is the best and which one we think is the best value. First off, we decided to measure the suction power, also known as sealed pressure. We rigged up our own version of what most manufacturers do to measure the sealed pressure. We got a big long tube, we stuck it in a bucket of liquid, and we attached our vacuums to it. We used a very scientific method of attaching called duct taping. Please rest assured that the seal was very tight. There was no air leakage to ensure accuracy for all the tests. We got the measuring tape in place and we began the sucking. Basically, we tried to simulate some real life, real world usage to get accurate data and sort of a subjective feel for what we liked using the most. Well, here are the results. The CS Unitec, the Metabo, and the Milwaukee all produced about 88 inches of suction power followed up by the pulse back, which was difficult to measure, ranging between 80 and 98, but seemed to settle in around 90. Followed up by the Bosch, which hovered between 90 and 93, then followed up by a very strong showing from Makita at 96, maybe 97 inches of suction power. Very impressed by the power on the Makita. Now, you don't often use a vacuum like this in such a controlled environment, so we rigged up a quick test to see how they did sucking up water for real. But before we did that and got the filters all wet, we set up a dust collection test. We marked out a 3x3 area, sprinkled it with 4 cups of sawdust and 2 cups of laundry detergent. Now, why detergent, you ask? Well, because it glows under a black light and we can see just how much is left over after a typical sweeping. We simulated an environment where things are moving quickly, you don't always have time to grab the attachment, or you're just feeling tired and don't want to walk across the shop or out to the van to search for the attachment, only to find that the last guy who used the vacuum didn't put it back. Most of these vacuums are being used for dust collection, and they're attached to a tool. So we spread the materials out and gave ourselves 30 seconds to suck as much material as we could in the normal light. Then we turned on the black light to see how much material was left over, and we timed how long it took to suck up the rest. Not perfect, but again, pretty much how a real shop or worksite situation goes. What we found was that the Makita and the Pulseback did a better job on both passes in the light and in the dark, which stands to reason since they both showed up a little bit stronger on the suction test. But the Makita hose was sticky and it kind of left black marks on the floor, which we weren't real excited about. And the Paul's back was pretty dang loud. The other four, they did about the same. 
It's not the most scientific test because there are a few variables changing, you know, the rate of sweeping, the angle to the floor, the distribution of the materials, but we think it does a good job of showing the clear winner in this department was the powerful Makita. Another point here is that accessories and attachments are not a part of this shootout. To test all the attachments against one another would make this video unbearably long, and it's already probably past the attention span of most human beings. Our amazing videographer Sarah and the regular tool expert Jay donned their lab coats to at least appear a little bit scientific while we commenced the real world liquid cleanup simulation. We thought a fish tank would do just fine. We poured five gallons in, measured it off, then repeated for each vacuum. How long would it take to suck five gallons of water? Unfortunately, the Unitech shut off after 10 seconds and it took approximately a minute to dump it, but we only walked about 20 feet to do so. And most of the time you gotta go outside or find a tub or a sink or something to dump it, adding additional time. We got it put back together and allowed the auto filter cleaner to run through one cycle and we added another two seconds of actual water collection. All told, it took roughly 1 minute and 30 seconds to suck up the 5 gallons. The Metabo, pretty much the same as the Unitech, but sucked in a little more before shutting off. Next was the Milwaukee at 12.94, and then the Bosch at 12.69, basically the same. Then the Makita drank it in like it had been in the desert for the last week and put up a really fast time at 7.71 seconds. The pulse back came in just underneath the Makita, but we realized after this test that the pulse back is not advertised as being suitable for liquid collection, and that kind of sucks, like in the bad way, because all the other vacs do about the same thing for a lower price. So the Makita wins for sucking speed. However, since the tank capacity for the Makita actually holds 12 gallons, that makes it pretty heavy when it's full, and as you'll see later, it's really not the best at rolling around. So far the Makita is looking pretty dang good, but this is where it gets interesting. We took a close look at some of the other features and some of the drawbacks to help us decide which vac is the overall winner. For hose length and quality, the Makita wins for length, but not durability. After we ran all the hoses over with Jay's truck, we inspected and found the most obvious crease was on the Makita hose. And we like the hoses that attach with a turn or a click for speed of removal and attachment but the Makita and Milwaukee that attach by a pressure fitting are just fine. Now the cord wrap. We purposely did not read any manuals in order to see if the cord wrapping system just made sense. Most of them did, but some more than others. And not many of us really spend the time carefully wrapping the cord after we've been sawing concrete for eight hours. We wanna quickly wrap it, toss it over the hook, into the truck or the corner of the shop and keep rolling. We like the CS Unitech and Metabo best for this, but the Milwaukee was nice too because of the little bungee thing that secured it. The Makita was a pain in the butt. Not only did we have to be precise about the wrapping, but the dang thing rolled around like a hockey puck on ice. We are pulling for you, Makita, but you're not making this easy. It might seem small, but nobody wants their vacuum moving when it should be still, and when it's rolling, we want it to roll smoothly. The Makita takes a huge fall here, like literally. All the vacs, empty, rolled over an extension cord. You ever have this happen? Yeah, right, me neither. Well, the Makita crashes hard twice. We tested it just to make sure and the rest of them handle rolling over the extension cord pretty well, except the pulse back, which is really no comparison because it has no wheels. Now you can get their Tri-Glide Dolly, which looks to be of high quality for 160 bucks, but jeesh, the wheels must be very not sucky for that much extra dough. Anyway, the Milwaukee has the nicest casters by far. Heavy duty metal with smooth rolling and great locking on both front wheels. The other front wheels made of plastic don't really make much sense to us. I mean, if we're talking about dust collection for silica dust, we're probably rolling around and working on rough surfaces like brick, concrete, asphalt. I mean, even most shop floors made of cement or tile are gonna be rough. Plastic wheels are gonna wear down much more quickly. Now, the Makita sported some nice casters, but please, guys, no locking mechanism? I mean, it makes this thing a total pain in the butt to work with. As for power cable length, it's not a real factor, except for the pulse back only has a 15 inch long cord. I mean, it's long enough to wrap a relief knot with your extension cord, but still we find it odd that they don't at least make it like a six foot cord so we can plug it into an outlet in the shop without an extension cord. The last test we did was to measure the decibel level. We used an A weighting per most industrial testing and found them all to be close to what the manufacturers listed, but the pulse back was noticeably louder which does make a difference in your day-to-day -day ear fatigue and long-term hearing health, even when you are wearing ear protection. 
So the winner, the quietest, was the Makita at 70 decibels, and the rest were between 83 and 74 decibels. The last and probably most defining data point is price, of course. The Metabo goes for 592 bucks, or slightly more, and the CS Unitec, which if you haven't noticed is basically the exact same vacuum as the Metabo made by the same manufacturer, comes in at 743. The hose is longer and the switches have some slight variations, but we're not sure if it's $50 worth more hose. The Milwaukee runs just one nickel under $600, as does the Bosch, and the Makita sells for $559, and sometimes you can find it for the lower 500s. The Pulseback, which is obviously the oddball in this shootout, costs significantly more at $989, and like we mentioned before, if you want wheels, it's 160 more smackers for a total of $1149. So, in the end, which vacuum do we like best? And which has the best value? We gotta give it to the Milwaukee. It prices out in the same neighborhood as the majority of the other vacs, it performs as good or better than most of the pack, and it was the most user-friendly overall, and felt the most durable. The wheels, the locking mechanism, the way things connected, it just felt like it was gonna hold up. Congratulations, Milwaukee. You suck the best. All right, there you have it. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video, for sticking with us to the end. If you want to make a comment, we'd love to hear what you think. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe too, so you stay up to date with our latest product reviews, comparisons, and new releases. Head over to coptool.com and get the full story. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one. And they all suck. Sucky suck. And we want to let you know. <laughs> That's terrible. Sorry. There you have it. Ah, Leave us a comment. All right, guys. There you have it. Nope. <laughs> like and subscribe. Head on. <laughs> Full story. Gonna. Bah. <laughs> Get out there and start sucking. Uh, bah. <laughs> go forth and suck. Oh, okay. Man. Here we go.